Hello everybody. Welcome to Blue Marble Science. I recently had a debate on Jose JG's channel with Brian's Logic. Now the debate was supposed to be about gravity and atmospheric pressure, but things went a little sideways. Here's some of the more, shall we say, interesting exchanges. Warning. Severe facial and monitor damage alert is in effect. Get out the oven mitts. Push the monitors back out of punching range. Let's light a dumpster fire and have some fun. Okay. Everyone, everyone see me, yes? Yes, sir. Okay. This is just a very short video. Uh, I put on. I have the sound on, but I don't know if it'll come true. Okay, here we go. There's no audio, but we see the video. <clears throat> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've seen this one many times. So this is just showing what happens when a gas is allowed to go to a lower pressure system. Then yeah, it goes yeah. there immediately. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Uh, two other things, uh, three or uh, Two other things I'd say about this is both the gas and the vacuum have to be uh, contained. That, that, is that wouldn't have been possible to do without containment for the vacuum no. or the gas. No, you that, couldn't. That's exactly right. A gas, uh, sorry, a vacuum has to be created and a gas has to be contained. And you can't create a vacuum and not contain it. So, so that's really all I have to show. That's my, that's my opening. Well, Brian, I wondered if, uh, if maybe we could go through a few things and see, see what we agree on. Let's start with this. Uh, do you agree with, uh, with Newton's first law, the law of inertia that says, uh, uh, sorry, hmm? go on, go on, sorry, I, I got down on you now. Yeah, it's uh, a body at rest, uh, or moving in a straight line at a constant speed is going to remain at rest or moving in that straight line at that constant speed. Unless you act, unless it's acted on by a force, you, do you agree with that? So basically, something moving in a straight line at a constant speed is going to keep moving in that straight line unless yeah. it is pushed pushed to go a different direction or forced in some way to go a different way. Right. Well, uh, yeah. uh, well, the constant speed. What is that? It's going to be like let's just say you're talking about something having been pushed, something already that is in motion. Yeah, something already in motion stays in motion. Something at rest stays at rest. That's all it says, really. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, if so, when something is moving, um, and if a force acts on it, then it can change the direction of it. Yes. Oh when yeah. Moving, well, but, but it takes it takes energy to get something moving. Right. Right. Yeah. That that assumes this assumes that it's already moving. Yeah. All right. That's okay. Right. Well, I, I I can't really disagree with it because I mean that's pretty obvious. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's pretty fundamental. It's one of it's Newton's first law of motion, and Newton's second law of motion is just the one everybody's heard a million times. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Do you have any problem with that? Uh, I have a problem with the word mass, uh, and the reason I have a problem with the word mass. Uh, matter is a better word because mass uh, is part of the gravity belief, as is buoyancy. So I don't have any belief in gravity, buoyancy, or mass. I do have a belief in flo floating matter and density. It was at about this point when I started thinking things might not go so well. Brian rejects gravity, buoyancy, and mass, but he accepts density, floating, and matter. I don't see the difference in matter and mass. To me, floating and buoyancy are identical. And I'm sure there's some linkage between density and gravity that will become clear as we move forward. It's one of the fundamental uh, laws of, of motion. Uh, and you, sorry, and it's, 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 it's typically pretty much indisputed by either side of this argument. I'm not, uh, um, I'm not, look, I, I'm, I don't watch a whole lot of science lectures. Uh, uh, I did watch some of them, but I don't watch very many. But, but supposedly, now, as I said, I don't watch very many. I didn't watch this one, but supposedly Richard Feynman said that his laws of motion were wrong. Richard Feynman was not disagreeing with Newton. He was talking about Rutherford and pointing out that Newtonian physics do not work correctly when you try to apply them 
at a subatomic level. That's what quantum mechanics is for. This is what he actually said. Anyway, you do it. Don't forget you had Rutherford, so it's okay. <laughs> Anyhow, he had a theory of the... He developed a, our understanding of the atoms as having a tiny core, as very heavy, with the particles going around it, electrons. Now, supposing that the electrons went around according to the laws of motion of Newton, some properties of matter could be understood, supposing the atoms were made that way. But most of the time, it failed. And it became more and more of a crisis in physics to understand what matter was like uh, because it looked so obviously right that it had to be electrons going around nuclei and yet nothing worked when you worked it out. And the discovery was made then in the discovery of quantum mechanics, first in the behavior of light and then in the behavior of matter and finally culminating in 1926 with the full equation of quantum mechanics which told us that the laws of motion of Newton were not right and had to be modified to other laws, which are quantum laws of motion. And when this uh, quantum laws of motion were applied to electrons to explain the properties of matter, it was a fantastic success. These are just three points I want to see if we can agree on. Uh, a third point is that if any object we drop, regardless of its mass, matter, if you want to say that, uh, no matter how much matter it has, it will accelerate toward the ground at 9.8 meters per second per second in a vacuum. Yeah, well, uh, my problem with that is that there is a belief that everything falls at the same speed in a vacuum. Now, if we slow down those videos of things falling in a vacuum, the things that are more dense tend to still hit the ground first. Now, the oh. problem, the main problem I have with that would be the 9.8 meters per second per second squared. Uh, because that's a calculation and not a measurement. No, it's, it's actually... It as no. to, how, do, how was it measured? You have to know the distance it falls and how much time it took it to fall. Yeah, but that's not a measurement. That, that is still a calculation. Well, look, I'm not going to be a stickler on it. I, I just, I don't... I, I view the 9.8 meters per second squared um, as a calculation and a stone in a vacuum. We, we don't live in a vacuum. We live in with gas pressure. We live in a in a in a living environment, whereas a vacuum is a dead environment, more or less. So well, that's, that's that, that'd be my other issue with it. That is that is a point, but understand the reason uh, for saying for stipulating in a vacuum, and that's because the atmosphere we live in uh, is is bound to produce uh, air resistance, and so if you yeah. have uh, if you have a very light object that has a lot of surface area it clearly is going to fall slower than uh, a, a more dense object that it doesn't have as much surface area. If that point. Well, guys, dropped... uh, we have we have this screen share for 20 minutes and we kind of almost over with this one <laughs> screen cap or what? Yeah, let's see. Oh, we, uh, we can move on, move on. These are okay. Yeah, this please. Is good. <laughs> yeah, let's see, if we, let's okay, see if we can get, get, get beyond this. Uh, uh, let me just move to something else. Okay. Uh, if we take a ball, an object of some sort, little red thing, we'll call a mass, this little red thing here, mm -hmm. and we lift it some distance off the ground, and we let go of it. Yeah. According to the law of, the law of inertia, it's at rest. It's not going to move unless a force is applied to it. Some force has to be applied to it to get it to move toward the ground. This is this is what you're saying. Yeah. It needs a force to to move towards the ground. It has to have a force to move toward the ground. It cannot move out of its position unless we apply a force to it. That's the law of well, inertia. Yeah, well, I would disagree with that. You because disagree with what I, I thought I we agreed. Because, that, I thought we agreed that the law of inertia was was a good law. Well, where where do we talk about the law of inertia? The other day. Hi, I'm Tom. Huh? Uh, Henry. Hi. Marlon. Tom lost part of his brain in a hunting accident. His memory only lasts 10 seconds. It was in an accident? That's terrible. Don't worry. You'll totally get over it in about three seconds. Get over it? I mean, what happened? Did I get shot in the brain? I... Hi, I'm Tom. The very first point we made. The, yeah, go back to it. Go back to it. You were talking about the... Uh, yeah. the uh, yeah, but you were talking about an object that was already in motion. No, a body at rest will remain at rest or a body in motion will remain in motion. 
yeah, but that doesn't, yeah, but I, I was talking about a car not moving or a car moving. I'm not talking about dropping something because that's a different thing. No, it's exactly the same thing. Well, inertia, that's not what I was talking about. Uh, and inertia is inertia. Yeah, but that's not what I was talking about. And as I said, Richard Feynman possibly said that he was wrong about it. Um, I, I would say that that has to be wrong. I, I was talking about a car either stopped, right? Unless someone pushes it, it will stay stopped. If it's moving, it won't change its course from a straight line unless someone makes it change its course from a straight line. There is no viable scientific hypothesis for gravity. And there's certainly what? no hypothesis test for gravity. There's no viable scientific hypothesis for gravity. And there was no hypothesis test for gravity. This never happened. Brian. Yeah. Let's go back to, let's go back to what Newton actually said. Okay. I, I, oh, I, hang on. I, 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 something, is, something is causing an effect. Yeah, density. Something is causing it. Well, let's density suppose, uh, causes the effect. I don't. I don't agree with that. Uh, I, I absolutely reject that. that. That's not what it is. Right. Calculate. De determine the amount or number of something mathematically. Similar. Compute. Work out. Reckon. Figure. Enumerate. Determine. Mm -hmm. to yes. Calculate. Okay. That the word measure is not in there. <laughs> you want, well, I can get other definitions if you want. No, no, that's fine. I understand. Yeah. I, I understand perfectly. What is the problem with this? Is that calculation? Uh, well, today I, I'll show you. I'll show you what. Right, uh, measure. One second here. Yeah. I know what measure means too. So do you. We don't need to do all this. Yeah, but I just want to point out something with measure. <clears throat> Ascertain the size, amount, or degree of something by using an instrument or device marked in standard units. That's what I'm talking about, the difference between measure and calculate. Uh, to measure something is to actually use a physical, uh, something physical, like a, a measuring jug, a measuring tape. You're measuring it. The calculate is different. It's using mathematics. And we, I can measure the height of somebody, or I can calculate. I know if I measure that I definitely know what height that person is. But if I calculate, I may or may not be correct. One second, I must go back on what you just said there. <clears throat> you said if you measure the time. You can't measure time. Time is a concept. You can't measure a concept. Blip. So we don't have watches, clocks, timers? We do. We do have clocks and watches, but we, they're not, time is not a physical thing. You can't measure time. Well, no, you can't. You can. You can. You can. I don't know how what way to. You can calculate the time. Can't measure. I said to you that the plants and trees and stuff they don't use as much carbon as they pump out. Like the, the amount of carbon they use in connection to the amount of oxygen they release is they only use like one power carbon for six power or seven power uh, oxygen. If you want to talk like think of it in that way. They release a lot more oxygen than the carbon they use. And you're laughing at me for saying that. Carbon dioxide. What is that? Carbon dioxide. It's a gas. Yeah. yeah. Made up of what? I'm not sure. I don't know what it's made up of. It's, it's gas. It's a type of oh. gas. Okay. That's used by plants and trees. Let's move on. Really? But there's already pressure of gas inside and outside of it, uh, Blue. I'm, I'm How sorry, do you have not. the pressure outside of it? How do we have the pressure outside? The pressure that was already inside, the gas pressures that were already inside and outside the pipe, how are they there? Well, I'm glad how you, you have I am. Uh, I'm glad you asked. Okay. Atmospheric pressure is simply the weight of a of the column of air above you. Wait. Think about it. How, think about it. Think about how it. This gas way, how do you weigh gas? Uh, there's there's several ways you can do it. Uh, in fact, you can do it yourself if you want to. You can weigh the you can weigh the uh, uh, the weight of the air in a balloon if you want to. Yeah. So to weigh gas, you have to put it into a container. You weigh the container, then you add the gas. Then you weigh it again. Then you subtract the differential. That's how you weigh gas. Yes. 
Mm, that's that's that would be a way. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you're talking um, about atmospheric pressure. Wait a minute. Let me finish answering your question about atmospheric pressure. Imagine that you've got. Uh, imagine a, just draw on a, on a piece of paper a square about one inch on each side, one by one. That's one square inch. The pressure at sea level that we feel is 14.7 pounds per square inch. That means that there is 14.7 pounds of atmosphere above you, above that one square inch. That's all that means. That's where where atmospheric pressure comes from, Brian. It comes from the weight of the gas. No. The weight of the gas is a function of gravity, of gravitational acceleration. No, stop, stop, Scott. I'm going to make nonsense. Does gas have a linear downward force? Well, we're going to leave this now. There's more than two hours of it over on Jose JG's channel. And a link to that will be right at the top of the description. So go visit Jose, give him a like and subscribe if you would. He's got a good channel. And with that, all you flat earthers out there, remember this. When we say, how stupid can you be? That is not a challenge. That's a question. Hey, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe here too. And click that little bell if you want notifications. A link to our Patreon will be in the uh, description as well. And with that, hey hamsters, take us out of here. Alan! 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 Alf! Alan! 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 May I have your attention, please? The Earth is a sphere. That is all.